Hey everyone, it's Ryder from Skip. I hope you're doing well. It's Monday, June 7th. Hope you had a great weekend. Quick and important video today. The latest on SBA news, including EIDL grants and loans. Many of you are still waiting for your targeted supplemental and EIDL loan increases. Plus, there was a lot of economic news today. I'm going to go over why some states are having such a tough time filling open jobs. The stock market today finished in mixed territory. Lawmakers are back in action this week to discuss the potential for a fourth stimulus check. Do me a favor if you've been watching our videos for a long time or you're brand new, hit subscribe. It helps our team so much. It allows us to continue to do this research every single day and put out videos for you. So like this video so others see it and watch until the end. Biden's press secretary on Friday said that Biden is open to figuring out what is best for the economy and the American people and a fourth stimulus check is on the table. I went over the likelihood in that in yesterday's video, but we also did a write-up with some more information, more data, some things that are in favor of a fourth stimulus check, and some of the drawbacks, namely getting 50 senators to agree that direct payments to Americans is the next best direction for the country. We're going to be following that all week, and we're going to be running new polls tomorrow on EIDL loan increases and targeted and supplemental EIDL advances. You know, I want to talk about the loan increase first because, look, almost 5,000 votes from our poll four days ago, 91% of you are still waiting for your EIDL loan increase. It has been almost two months. We've asked the SBA, what's going on? Is this a problem with just not having enough loan officers? That's what I suspect. Again, all of this comes down to manual reviews. Someone has to review your EIDL loan increase. And we suspect millions of businesses have requested EIDL loans, and it's a higher amount than last year. Yes, the process was quicker last year. Millions of businesses got EIDL loans within the matter of a couple months, but there was also a lot of fraud that took place. So I believe the SBA maybe intentionally this time around is slowing things down, doing more due diligence, checking into the revenue that you've reported on your form to make sure it matches what the IRS has on file. A lot of you are reporting that the SBA is saying, look, why does this not add up if you have conflicting information on your original EIDL loan application? But nearly 200 comments here. Sophia says, I haven't received the funds yet, but I was approved just two days ago. My portal says approved and funded. I'm in the home stretch. Congrats, Sophia. Let us know when it comes through. Jedediah says, I've been speaking with my loan officer for the past three weeks. He said, my application and paperwork are all 100% fine, but the only thing left is for the IRS to send them the requested transcript. I told him the transcript I sent was from the IRS. His response was that the one that comes directly from the IRS has a particular information. He also said if the transcript was received today, he'd approve my loan today. So folks, IRS is the one stopping us from receiving help. So keep that in mind. We're talking about SBA loan officers. SBA loan officers are often blaming the IRS. It's bureaucrats pointing fingers, but again, it all makes sense. The IRS also has a huge burden to process tax returns and to verify information for all of these SBA programs. My 500 pound story said, I was denied the increase because I overstated our income for 2019. Tried reconsideration, but it's a black hole. The SBA needs to be shut down and restructured. It's a joke that is hell-bent on destroying small businesses and our economy. Don't expect help from them anytime soon. Many of you have had the same thing, even though you write letters. It is a black box. Donald says they contacted me and didn't like I had a loss of income, so they denied it. Would you be asking for a loan if you were not having troubles? And it's not like I don't have a regular job that wouldn't support my business loan. I told the loan officer it was worth my time explaining to her for $5,000 additional loan. Philip says, seven weeks waiting, still processing and no updates, useless government. Another comment, they denied me falsely claiming I canceled email, recon, and EIDL increase, and they keep telling me to click a button that does not exist in my portal. Jill says, no money, just waiting for over two months. I called and they said it could take months before I get an answer. What a joke. Why do they let these people answer the phone? Another person says, I got frustrated and wrote to my congressional reps to intervene on my behalf. People need to see that black people aren't getting any money, either despite the SBA supposedly focusing on black owned businesses. Also, I keep getting locked out of my portal. Are any of you having similar experiences? So I read these all for two reasons. One, I wanted to show you the spectrum of experiences people are having. Some approved right away for the increase, they're funded. Some having to go through the hoops many times over. And some hearing that there's no one's insights. Second, we're hearing lots of insightful things. When you talk to the SBA reps, you all hear different things. But a couple common threads are that the SBA is often waiting for the IRS to send over a tax transcript. 
So there's that issue. And the SBA just plain doesn't have enough loan officers. Most of you still probably haven't been assigned to a loan officer. They're going one by one. You know, imagine all the back and forth. If they deny someone, someone submits a reconsideration, the loan officer then has to review, spend time going through it. So there's all that back and forth to get through millions of people. Would love to hear what you think about this in the comments. Okay, as we wrap here, three quick things I'm gonna leave you with. Number one, why is it so hard for certain states to fill jobs, okay? There's a trend across the country now. The map looks like this in the Northeast, the Midwest, the Plains, Northern Mountains are having a tough time filling jobs. So why? In fact, it's about three to one, three open positions for every one worker. So why is this the case? Several factors we've talked about, generally speaking, people know about. These include the enhanced unemployment benefits, that might provide a financial disincentive to take low-wage jobs. Still limited schools and childcare availability is keeping parents home. And of course, fear of COVID-19. So those are the three main factors. The first one, the unemployment benefits. That's why many states are ending the enhanced unemployment benefits early. Would love to hear what you think about that in the comments. It's obviously very controversial. And then of course, many of you still don't have childcare. You gotta stay home with your kids and fear of the pandemic. I wanted to point that out because there's a lot of new data that has just come out. Second, stocks are finishing in mixed territory. I haven't given a stock update in a little while. You know, the Dow ended last week at a record high, but today the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 slipped. There's a couple main reasons for the, generally speaking, muted trading sessions. Investors are assessing a range of factors, including the overall economic outlook, supply chain problems, and high valuation for stocks. There's also been, of course, the inflation worries. These have eased a little bit in the recent days, but investors are still edgy about inflation, especially when Biden talks about the trillion dollar plans and the fear around that, printing trillions of dollars of new money into the economy. Now, there are pros and cons to that. Of course, many economists still think that's the right move to continue to put money into the economy, but it's a lot of national debt at the same time. Finally, the third piece, our team continues to work tirelessly on new grants, new funding, new loan programs that may be relevant for you, whether you're an individual or a small business owner. These are all on the Skip app. Hello Skip in the App Store and Google Play. I'll leave the link right below. And I always love hearing your feedback, especially if you've used the app and you want to see more features. We're going to be doing a lot more product feedback in the coming weeks because our team is growing and we're going to be adding a lot more features. So of course, as always, be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned to what we're covering every day. Most importantly, stay well, stay healthy, and I'll see you tomorrow.